Reading is going to create lifelong habits for you. If you take some time to read every day, you're going to get in the habit of reading. It creates a stillness in you, which allows you to focus more. And being able to focus while you're studying throughout life is very important. Reading is important for education success. The other thing is, is that reading will expand your world in so many ways because you can read about people and places that you might never meet or never go to. And so it'll just expand your world. Reading can help you learn new words and expand your vocabulary. Reading can do a number of things for your education. One of the things about reading is that if you read about somebody who has a different life experience than you do, it creates a better understanding of the world and of the people in it. The more you read, the better writer you are, and the better writer you are, the better you are at academics and your education. Don't forget to read daily. It makes us sharp as we age. A lot of people say 20 minutes, and that's great as a starter, but I think a minimum of an hour a day is even better if you can fit it in. So make sure to leave time in your day to read, as it is clearly very important for our education, academics, and more. Welcome and thank you for being here. I want to thank you all for being here because um, you are your uh, child's first teacher. And so this is very important that um, you know that you're here and that you're, um, that as a uh, teacher, I just want to let you know that um, everything you do at home is very beneficial. It does come into the classroom with your child. So um, I just wanted to thank you for being here. Um, just a little background on myself. I was a classroom teacher for the last 13 years. Um, not too far from here, actually. I taught at Tech City Unified, uh, and I mainly taught in a primary classroom. Um, and then two years, or last year, I came on over here to Elk Grove as a family engagement resource teacher. Um, I am, I'm also a mom of two daughters. I have a 21-year-old, uh, and then I have a little one that's four. <laughs> so it's a huge age gap. Uh, but uh, a lot of these strategies, I will mention to you that I actually do use these with my little one. Uh, with my older one, I was very young. I didn't really, you know, realize the importance of, of reading at the time. Um, although I did read to her, I just didn't really make that connection until I started going to school and, you know, and, and taking these, um, um, the classes, you know, to become a teacher. And so then I realized, like, okay, these are all important things. And so now with my little one, I, you know, I... Um, I do still struggle with some things, as, as I'm sure you also do, so I'm here to help you with, um, to maybe provide some strategies to help, okay? So, um, this is our agenda for today. Um, we'll start off with a little icebreaker just to get to know each other a little bit more. I'll, uh, we'll talk about the essential standard, which today will be all about reading aloud to your child. Then we'll do a modeling of what that looks like. Uh, you'll get to practice with each other, and then we will establish a goal, and then just a summary at the end of what um, we talked about and what to expect for the next uh, class. Okay, any questions? No? Okay, so for our icebreaker today, um, uh, we can probably just do this out loud since we're, we're a small group. Um, if you can just share your name, the name of your child, um, your children, uh, and then what you would like to learn today. Okay. So um, I will start, I kind of already told you what my, my name, Nancy Lopez, I have my two daughters. Uh, and something I would like to learn today is, I just, I would like to know about you. Um, since this is my first time here, I, I really would like to get to know um, the families here, so. Okay, so um, like I said, our first, for our first session today, we're going to talk about read, uh, reading aloud. And then um, I just wanna let you know that I do have it in, in, in Spanish on the bottom. So um, what is read aloud? So like when the teacher says, oh, you know, we're going to do a read aloud today. What does that mean? Read out loud. They have to read out the words here. Reading out loud the words, yeah. They hear themselves, and I think it helps more. I do it a lot, a lot, uh, a lot and my husband gets, he, he laughs at me. He says, you're like a little kid, like, why are you reading out loud? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does, good, yeah. Anyone else? Reading aloud, what does that mean to you? They can have a better visual, maybe, too. When they hear you, when they yeah. Hear read, they could probably like, 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 
you know, see what they're, I guess it helps like they're... Yes, yeah, it does. She was saying that they, they can hear it with... Yeah, they can hear it. Yeah, it's when they can hear the reading. Yeah. So yeah, all those were, were right. Um, a read aloud is an instructional practice that we use, um, and it's that it's when an adult or a caregiver or someone is reading out loud to a child. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to talk about why that's important. So some of the reasons why that is very important. Now I also want to just say um, it's the different when uh, the difference is when we're reading to them versus the child. Yes, we want the child to read, and I heard you all saying that you, need, you want strategies on how to help your child be a better reader, but this is more on an adult um, or someone that's more fluent with the reading, okay? So this is what, uh, why it's important. So it builds vocabulary. A lot of the books that we read to our children, um, it's, it's vocabulary that's a little bit um, more academic. Maybe we don't use those words every day, and it's a way to expose them to those words. Okay, and then like you were saying, even a, as an adult, we also, uh, you know, learn these new words. So even myself, I, I do come across some words where I'm like, oh, we don't use that word too often. Let's start using the, those words. Um, understanding too, especially with, um, you know, problem solving books, a lot of our narratives have a lot of, you know, problem and solution. And so then children uh, have a better understanding on how to solve problems or, or what, you know, what happens um, uh, with, um, informative books too. They have a better understanding of those topics. Um, imagination, just like what you were saying, it builds their imagination. So the more we read to them, the more, uh, the more um, stories they have, they start building imagination. And this is really, really big for later on when they become writers. They have a lot more to write about. They start to make connections with those stories that we are reading to them, and then they can transfer that into a writing piece. Okay, memories, this is a really big one. Um, it, it builds um, memories for them. So when they become adults, hopefully they will remember that when they were little, we read to them and then they can also pass that on to their um, children. And then this last one, I, for me, I feel like it's the most important one, is that the love for reading. Um, I will share with you that um, my, my parents didn't read to me too often, but I do remember my mom always taking me to the library, and I would always see her reading. She would always read magazines and books, and so every week she would take us to the library, we would grab books, and so with my oldest one, I would do the same thing, and then with my little one too, I, I'm, been, I'm busy, but I try and make it to where I go every two weeks to grab as many books as I can, and then we always have a, a certain time, which again, I'll share with you later on, on how we do that. So these are just some of the ways that, um, why it's important to read to our children, okay? So for today, um, I am going to uh, model what a read aloud looks like. Um, I'm going to share with you a couple strategies that you may already be doing at home, um, or some that you may, you know, say, oh, okay, that's, I can, I, that's totally doable, I can do that at home. The book that I'm going to share with you today is Too Many Tamales. It's written by Gary Soto. Um, and uh, another thing too that I'm going to share with you about the book is that um, when I first came across this book, I was uh, in college. I was actually taking a, a children's literature uh, course and we needed to uh, research a author, a children's author. And so then I was looking through different authors and books and, that, and I came across this book and the first thing that I noticed was the, the picture, the front cover. And I looked at it and I thought, oh my gosh, that's me. <laughs> I, I don't know, I just, and every time I look at it, I always think like, oh my gosh, that's, that's me. I, I can totally see myself in this picture um, with my cousins during Christmas time making tamales. So um, I just want you to keep in mind that some of these, uh, when, when we're reading books to children, a lot of times they may or may not, you know, see themselves in, their, in the books. So um, it's really important that when they do see themselves in the books to, you know, pick that book up and, and share it with them because then they get more into the book and, and they're a little more motivated with the reading, okay? So um, I will um, practice a read aloud, um, just a few pages, I won't do too many. And this is where I will ask someone to um, help me. Um, so I will be the parent or the teacher and then I just need someone to be the student. Okay, um, so before I start, let's, um, if we can maybe just read through the strategies. I'll go ahead and do the first one. So the first one says, um, snuggle up close with a book. Okay, so that could be in your living room, at bedtime. 
The second one, can um, someone maybe help me with the second one, reading the second? Great reading rituals and read together every day. Thank you, yeah, so having a routine, okay? Um, the third one? Be interactive, discuss what, what's happening in the picture. Point out things in the pages, use different voices and read. Good, thank you. Um, how about the next one? Encourage involvement, invite child to turn the page or hold the book. Yeah, especially for the little ones that are very active and want to touch. Okay, and then um, I can go ahead and read the last one. Ask questions as you read. What do you think will happen next? How does that make you feel? Why do you think that? Okay, so those are just a few questions that you can ask during the reading, okay? So um, if I can have my, my uh, child volunteer. <laughs> yeah, you can, yeah, if you can just sit right here and then I'll sit here. Okay, so while I'm doing the modeling here, um, just kind of keep in mind those little strategies that we went over and we'll talk about it after, okay? Okay, are you ready for bedtime? No! Uh, well, you know what? I have a really, really good book here. I'm, this is one of my favorite books when I was uh, um, younger. You want to read it? Sure. Yeah? Okay. So, it's the title of the story is Too Many Tamales, and it's written by Gary Soto. Gary is the author. Do you know what Gary did? No? <laughs> You wrote it? <laughs> no, it's okay. You can, yeah, if you don't know, it's fine. Yeah, Gary wrote the, the words. You know how when you write your name on your paper, you're the author. Yeah, and then Ed Martinez. Ed is the illustrator. Do you know what the illustrator does? He draws the pictures. He or she draws pictures of the um, story. Yes, he is. But so are you. You're a good illustrator. Hey, what do you think is going on here? They all want to eat the tamales. Yeah, and look at their faces. <gasps> look at her oh. face. <laughs> what do Those you think? Are a lot of tamales. They, yes. Is that what they're saying? Yeah. That's good. I like that. Do you want to know what happens? Okay, let's turn. Do you want to turn the page? Good. Too many tamales. And it's written by Gary Soto and illustrated by Ed Martinez. Oh, wow, look at that. The big house. Yes, and what else is happening there? It's snowing. It's snowing, yeah. Do we have snow here? No. Not really, <laughs> huh? We have to go up to the, uh, up to the Sierras where it's snowing there. Hey, and then look, at, look in here. Look at the windows. What do you see? Uh, the girl. <gasps> She's like looking at this window. Yeah, Christmas trees. Oh, so then it must be Christmas time, huh? Little circle on the top. Yes, the wreath. Yes, that's a wreath. I'm going to go ahead and start reading. Ready? Snow drifted through the streets, and now that it was dusk, Christmas trees glittered in the windows. I wonder who she's looking out for. Maybe she's looking out for Santa. Maybe. Maybe she's looking out for Santa. Oh, maybe. Maybe. You ready? Oh, wow, look at that. What do you think they're doing? They're making the tamales. <laughs> How do you know? How do you know they're making tamales? Because I see that in the kitchen. <laughs> you do. We have that, don't we? Yes. Good job. I like how you observe. You're a good observer. Yes. We have the, the masa that we make sometimes tortillas or tamales. Yeah. And then look at their faces. They look happy. They do. They're about to eat some Yes. <laughs> Maria moved her nose off the glass and came back to the counter. She was acting grown up now, helping her mother make tamales. Their hands were sticky with masa. That's very good, her mother said. Maria happily kneaded the masa. She felt grown up wearing her mother's apron. Her mom had even let her wear red lipstick and perfume <laughs> if only i can wear mom's ring she thought to herself why does she want to wear mom's ring because she thinks it's pretty yeah <laughs> it's a nice ring it is yeah she has it right there look 
Do you think she's going to get to wear it? Yeah. She better wear her a apron. Maybe show her and what else does she have? Lipstick. And what else? And, oh, her perfume. Perfume. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at, look at her. <gasps> she's trying to get it. What do you think she's going to do? <clears throat> what do you think Maria is thinking? Should I get the ring? Should mm. I put it on? If you saw my ring, would you take it? Um, no, I would ask. Okay, good, <laughs> good. I'm glad you would. Okay, let's see what happens. Maria's mother had placed her diamond ring on the kitchen counter. Maria loved that ring. She loved how it sparkled like their Christmas tree lights. When her mother left the kitchen to answer the telephone, Maria couldn't help herself. She wiped her hands on the apron and looked back at the door. Uh -oh. <gasps> She's in trouble. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I hope she doesn't take the ring. I think she will. <laughs> <gasps> oh. Goodness, I hope she puts it back right away. What do yeah, you think? Well, she doesn't want to get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> or lose it. Yeah, or lose it. I'll wear the ring for just a minute, she said to herself. The ring sparkled on her thumb. Oh my gosh. Look at her face. She's so happy. She's so happy, I know. How do you know she's happy? Because she's smiling. She's smiling. Mm -hmm. Do you want to turn the page? Hmm. I wonder what happened to the ring. It probably went into the maca. <laughs> Maria returned to kneading the masa, her hands pumping up and down. On the thumb, the ring disappeared. Uh-oh, she still has it on then reappeared in the sticky glob of dough. Her mother returned and took the bowl from her. Go get your father for this part, she said. Then the three of them began to spread masa on the corn husks. Maria's father helped by plopping a spoonful of meat in the, in the center and folding the husk. He then placed them in a large pot on the stove. They made 24 tamales. How many? Oh my gosh, that's a lot. <laughs> As the windows grew white with delicious smelling curls of steam. You want to turn the page to see what happens? Oh. What's, what do you see here? They're going up the stairs. Who do you think those, those are? It's Ma um, Maria and her sisters and brother. Probably the family, huh? Yeah. You think they're coming over for dinner? Yeah. What are they going to eat? Tamales. <laughs> hmm. Are you thinking something? Are you wondering about something? I'm just wondering what they're going to do. They, her face looks kind of sneaky. <laughs> <gasps> it does, huh? Hmm. Well, you know what? It's past your bedtime. So we'll, <laughs> so we'll have to finish tomorrow. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's clap for her. Thank you so much. Okay. So, um, kind of you know looking or thinking on how some of the things that I modeled. Um, what did you see? Did you ask her to turn the page. Yeah, I asked her to turn the pages. Uh huh. Lots of questions. Lots of questions. Yeah. What kind of questions? Um, so she can use her imagination. Yeah. Did I just start reading right away? No. no what, what What did I always ask when I turned a page? Point to the picture and try to see what's happening. Yeah. That's really important because then that's when they really start to think and, and start asking questions on like, oh, well, maybe this or maybe that. And um, I also want to point out that it, even if it, you know, um, it's not really what happens, it's okay. You know, it's. Uh, I, I mentioned something about, oh, maybe he's looking for Santa. Like, he 
you know, it, it could, it, it might have been that. And so then when you're reading, then you can just say, oh, so that's what really happened, okay? Anything else that you saw? You use different voices. Yes, different voices. So um, at home with uh, my daughter, I, I do a lot of the changing the voices, and that's really important because you want children to hear the different expressions and then the dialogue, whenever there's dialogue to change her voice. Um, so her dad, when he reads to her, and when he first started reading to her, he would just kind of read straight through. <laughs> and then I would, then we would all read together, and he would hear me, and he would say the same thing. Well, now I can hear him, and he'll change his voices too. So it does, it will happen. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's really important for them to hear the expression. Okay. Um, it also keeps them engaged. Um, want, they want to, you know, know what's going, what's going to happen next. Um, so the more engage, engaging you make it, the more they, they will also be into it. Any other, anything else that you saw that you thought like, oh, okay, that makes more sense or? Well, they were also participating. They were reading to them, uh, asking questions and just pointing things out. So they were participating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They weren't just listening to me read. So yeah, yeah, it's not just listening to me read. It's actually participating. Okay. Um, you don't need to finish a, a book that night they may want to like you know like no no read the story I know in my classroom I would purposely do that I would stop because I wanted them to come back the next day and to remind me you know Ms. Lopez can you read that book that you didn't finish yesterday so it keeps them again engaged it's that wanting to find out what happens next okay so when I read to my daughter and I show you doing that uh -huh. um, I go with every word with my fingers Tracking, so she yeah. can hear it uh -huh. and yes, yes, she yes, can okay. see it so yes. now she knows like her some of the words like I or can mm -hmm. yes that's perfect yeah tracking with your finger yes yeah um, even for little little ones it's really important that you do that because um, in, in preschool, they need to know how to hold a book. They need to know how to turn a page. They need to know how to go from left to right. So that's very, very important that you do that. Mm -hmm. um, pointing out, yeah, high frequency words um, throughout the story. So like on the title page, if you say, oh, is there a high frequency word on here that you recognize? Well, yeah, you know, this is a high frequency word. Or with little ones, um, what, uh, what letter does the tamales start with? Or what sound does the T say? You know, you can do those kinds of things too with the little ones. The other thing too is um, if, if you, on the first day you, you are reading the book, you don't have to read the, um, the story. Just go, just go through the pictures. It's called the picture walk is what we call it, okay? So just, you know, like, what do you think is going on here? Okay, well, what about this page? And, and yeah, and you can even get to the very, very end and, and say, okay, tomorrow we're going to read and find out what really happens in the book, okay? So those are some of the things that you can do um, with that. So I know you want to find out what happened to the ring, right? Yeah. Okay, because everyone always tells me, well, what happened? So um, I have the books for you. Um, so I, but what I want you to do is you can start from the beginning or you can start or where I left off. And I want you to practice with someone, some of those things that I was doing, maybe just asking questions or maybe just asking, you know, well, what do you think is happening here, okay? Um, I also, another thing too that I was gonna tell you is, um, well, a couple other things is, um, that I brought this book in Spanish. Um, it's not in Spanish or in English, it's just either in English or in Spanish. So if you want the Spanish book, I can give you that to you. Um, and I also wanna let you know that it's okay to uh, read books in your primary language. Okay, reading is reading in any language. So if you're reading in your primary language, they're still picking up those same strategies, asking questions, talking about what's going on. That's building vocabulary. When they, um, if they uh, are English learners, they will eventually pick up the English and then be able to transfer those skills in English as well. So don't be, you know, um, uh, con um, how do I say this? Um, don't feel that, you know, well, if I read to them in Spanish, they're going to get confused. They're not. That they will eventually pick up those strategies, okay? So um, I'll go ahead and pass the books around. If you want a Spanish book, let me know and I can give you um, the Spanish book, okay? Any questions? I'll give you a few minutes just to practice that and then we'll come back and then I'll ask you how that went, okay? Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, so um, tell me some of the things. I was listening to lots of questions, and I really enjoyed listening back and forth what you were sharing every time you turned the page. So um, if you can just share, how did that go with you? How did it work out? How Or new things that you tried, something new? With my son, I tried to make him laugh, and I make some stories about that. what like you said. It doesn't go to the story, but that's making me laugh. And yeah. Good, yeah, even if it doesn't go to this, I mean, if it's not part of the words, you know, um, but if you're talking about the pictures, I know that you started having a conversation about what kind of tamales you liked, and you said, oh, well, I prefer the sweet ones with the pineapple. So that's great. I mean, if, if you're having those conversations with your children, you know, or in, in your family when you're reading a story and everyone's participating, that's great. I know most of you are first graders, so maybe this doesn't pertain to the first graders, but for the little kids, they'll want to read the same book over and over and over and over. I need to read like 10. Yeah, that too. So my little one, for like months, all she wanted to read was Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. <laughs> so we would, and you know, um, they, research shows that it's okay, you know, that it's, it's a good thing to read to them the same book over and over. But one of the things that I would do is I would get a basket, I get a basket of books, and I just rotate them. Um, and then also I would let her pick a book, which is part of, you know, them feeling engaged, is I would say, I say, okay, you pick one book and I pick one book. And then that way, uh, you know, she's going to pick the same one, but then I'm going to pick a different one. And then we just compromise and say, okay, well, you pick your book and I pick mine. So um, eventually I ended up just taking that one and rotating it around. I mean, we still have it, but, um, but yeah, but it's okay. I know for us it might be a little like, oh, my gosh, the same one. But um, you can also just, like I said, change the words and say, you know, today we're not going to read it. Today we're just going to make up our own story. Okay? And then do whatever works for you as far as the, the daily, you know, having a, a daily uh, routine. Um, it might be right after school that works best for you, or it might be at bedtime. For, for me at my house, it's, it's at bedtime. So she knows that when it's time, you know, for her bath and brush teeth, like she knows, oh, it's, are you going to, what story are you going to read to me today? So like she automatically knows. Um, but do what, but, uh, what works best for you. And then also the more you involve in your family to do this, the, the better. I mean, like I said earlier, it creates memories for your children. So um, if everyone is at home right after dinner, you know, then that's when you might want to do the reading. And remember, like I said, um, read to your child in your primary language at home. They're not going to get confused. Um, I taught dual language for the last eight years. So I taught um, uh, in kindergarten how to uh, read, write, and speak in Spanish. And it wasn't just to Spanish speakers, it was also to English only students and children that were learning Spanish as a third language. And it always, every single year, I would be amazed on how fast the children that did not speak Spanish picked it up uh, so fast. So they're not going to get confused. They will not. They, they will eventually transfer those skills over. Okay, so if at home you speak Spanish, read to them in Spanish, it's okay. So before we go, um, I'm going to um, do just a couple little things. I gotta do the, oh, before we go, I also wanted to um, ask you, so how many times a week, I mean, I know most of you already do this, um, how many times a week can you do this at home? Reading, yeah, just reading a book. Yeah. Every day? Every day. Every day. Yeah, every day. Uh, uh, one thing, too, that I wanted to say, you don't have to read for 30 minutes. Five minutes is good. I usually do it just for 15. I'll put good. Mm -hmm. I know, yeah. Especially for the little, little ones, even like little like, that, like him. Um, uh, they're not going to sit, and it's okay. When, my, when mine was that little, I would just close the bedroom door, and I would just read, and she would be, you know, crawling around. Eventually, like now, yeah, we just get in the bed and she sits, I mean, she would have me reading for an hour if she could. But, um, but yeah, she c they can just, you know, be in the room and you just read. Um, and then how will you know that your child is, you know, participating and enjoying this and... They're asking questions. They're asking questions. Yeah, good. Yeah, they're following along too. They're following along. They're asking for the story. Yeah, so those are all good. Okay, so um, so you'll be focusing on reading aloud for the next week. Um, the next, uh, when we come back next week, we'll talk about um, letters and sounds. Um, and then I'll also ask you like how this uh, worked out at home with you. Okay, and then while you're finishing up that, um, again, I wanted to just, again, thank you for being here. Um, 
uh, it really, really means a lot as uh, in my teacher uh, perspective, I guess, that, um, that you're here and that you're helping your child. It, it really does help out when they're in class, um, even with just simple, you know, question, asking them questions on the books and things like that. So thank you again, and I hope to see you next week. going to talk about music and I'm at my favorite music shop earth shaken music what's not to love with the shop is called earth shaken music and two of my friends Scott and Joy are gonna help me out today see if they can help me find a, an instrument I can play let me tell you kids so far I've come like four or five times it's been a total bust so maybe today's a lucky day but they're not open yet so let me tell you about a wonderful music book it's called Zin, 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 a violin. It is a beautiful book. It's a Caldecott honor. The illustrations are out of this world. Beautiful colors, and they swirl around. They just look musical. Not to mention, it's in rhyme, which is kind of music in a way. So let me read you a page or two. Zin, 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 a violin by Lloyd Moss, illustrated by Marjorie Priceman. With a mournful moan in silken tone, itself alone comes one trombone. Sliding, gliding, high notes go low. One trombone is playing solo. Next, a trumpet comes along and sings and stings its swinging song. It joins trombone no more alone. And one and two o, oh, there are duo. What well, goes on introduce instrument after orchestral instrument until you end up this wonderful crescendo. The orchestra comes in the hall, they're on the stage. We see them all, the cello, harp, and clarinet, the trumpet, whom we've also met, the oboe, flute, and big bassoon, all eager to get started soon. Trombone, French horn, and violin, all poised and ready, now begin. Well, there are lots of wonderful music books. This is only one. And now, we want to hear the music books you love. Tell us about it. I like the book Grandpa Songbook because Grandpa likes to sing a lot and so do I. The name of my book is The Remarkable Farkle McBride. I like this book because Farkle McBride taught me a lesson to like whatever kind of music no matter how it sounds. I like the book When Mary Ann Sang because it teaches an important lesson to keep working for what you want even when different things stand in your way. I recommend Dave at Night to anyone who likes to read historical fiction books filled with excitement and laughter. I like this book because it has great pictures. I like the book A Crooked Kind of Perfect because it's a book about a girl named Zoe who likes to play piano just like me. And, ev and even though her dad's afraid to leave a, her, his house, which her friends find kind of weird, her life may not be perfect, but it's a crooked kind of perfect. I like the book What Charlie Heard because 
Charlie hears uh, Charlie hears stuff that he likes, and so do I. I like Who Are the Beatles because they uh, it has a bunch of rock and roll songs in it, and I like rock and roll. I like the the music teacher from the Black Lagoon because it's funny and it. They think that she is very mean, but she is very nice at the end. I love this book, If I Only Had a Horn, because it reminds me of when I first got my electric guitar. The name of my book is Looking for a Bird in the Big City. I like the book because it, and it has music inside of it. The name of this book is The Bat Boy and His Violin. I like this book because even when his father's team lost, he still liked his son's violin music. I think you should check this book out. Check it out. I think you should check it out. You should check it out. Check it out. You have to read this book. I think you should check it out. Oh man. Do re mi fa so la ti. Ha, what I tell you guys, isn't this place amazing? And everything seems to make music in here. I mean, watch this. They even have the world's tiniest harmonica. Of course, can't play it, but I can't play anything. And musical Easter eggs. Who would have thought? And it has so many other possibilities. I. Hey, Carmen. <laughs> Hi, Scott. Hey, welcome back. Hi, it's good to be back. Welcome I need to mess around back. with your stuff again. Well, oh, you know. I love this place. I love it too. Except I can't play anything, as you know. Well, let's change that today. Let's find that instrument that you've We've been tried everything. For. Not everything. Let's try some Not more everything. stuff today. I have faith in you. All right. Lead the way, Okay, my good man. let's go this way. All right. Where are we? Oh, drums. Oh. Wow, look at the bongos. It's like a whole herd of drums. We herded them all in here. You captured them in the wild, That's did you? That's right, yeah. <laughs> so let's try the bongos real quick. I'll just show you the basic pattern. Okay. These all are right. little, unimposing, right? Yeah, like they don't look very really scary yet. Yeah, but. so, all right. So here's the basic uh, pattern. I'll play it full speed and then I'll break it down for you. So it's... All right. Okay. You're totally kidding, right? All right, so you just take oh, one, one hand oh. at a time here. Okay, so all right, all right, all right. With your left hand on the smallest drum. Now by the other hand? I your other one. left, yeah. Uh, you're just brushing the top of the drum and kind of alternating between your fingers and your thumb. Just kind of brush, brush. One, two, three, four, okay, one, two, that. three, four, that. one, two, Looking three. Looking good, yeah. And then all you do is add your right hand. I can't do that. Well, I'm gonna go look around for just a minute all on my own. That was okay, really well, I'll you. Keep playing. As you were, my good man. not a rain stick it's a didgeridoo uh, di a didgeridoo a didgeridoo it's an aboriginal instrument from australia i've heard of those yeah it's kind of hard to play because you have to use circular breathing let me show you here you try holy mo are you kidding me come on try it what you know what, kids? This could take a while. So why don't you guys check out a cool new book? And I'm um, I'm gonna try the circular breathing. Circular breathing. <laughs> okay, today I'm going to share with you one of the best books I read over the summer. It's called Out of My Mind by Sharon Draper. Now look at the cover of this book. 
Based on what the cover of this book shows, does anyone have a prediction on what they think this book might be about? What do you think it's about? Might, uh, might be about a fish escaping someone, uh, from someone. And why do you think that? Um, what I think is the fish is jumping out of the bowl to get away. Okay, excellent. I like how you use a picture to help you with your explanation. Sarah, what do you think the book might be about? Someone going crazy. And why do you think they might be going crazy? Because usually if you say you're out of your mind when they say something that might be completely impossible. Okay, all right, that makes a lot of sense. Aiden, what do you think? Um, well, it almost looks like um, it's almost something like abnormal or strange. And why do you think that? Um, because it's not, it's not usual for a fish to be jumping out of a bowl. Okay, well, what if I were to tell you that this person is going out of their mind because they have trouble communicating with others? Has that ever happened to you where you've wanted to say something or express yourself, but you've had trouble talking or telling someone what you needed or wanted? What kind of feeling does that bring about with you? Is that a happy feeling? How would you describe that feeling? How would you describe that feeling? Frustrating. Frustrating. And do you know what? Melody in this book, that's exactly how she feels. Why don't we listen to a um, short part? This is chapter one. And I can tell you when I read this first chapter, it made me want to read the rest of the book. Words. I am surrounded by thousands of words, maybe millions. Cathedral, mayonnaise, pomegranate, Mississippi, Neapolitan, hippopotamus, silky, terrifying, iridescent, tickle, sneeze, wish, worry. Words have always swirled around me like snowflakes, each one delicate and different, each one melting untouched in my hands. Deep within me, words pile up in huge drifts. Mountains of phrases and sentences and connected ideas, clever expressions, jokes, love songs. From the time I was really little, maybe just a few months old, words were like sweet liquid gifts and I drank them like lemonade. I could almost taste them. They made my jumbled thoughts and feelings have substance. My parents have always blanketed me with conversation. They chattered and babbled. They verbalized and vocalized. My father sang to me, and my mother whispered her strength in my ear. Every word my parents spoke to me, I absorbed and I kept and remembered, all of them. I have no idea how I, how I untangled the complicated process of words and thought but it happened quickly and naturally. And by the time I was two, all my memories had words and all my words had meanings, but only in my head. I have never spoken a single word. I'm almost 11 years old. Hey, right, what did you think about that, Eli? Maybe she's a mute and she can't really talk. Mm -hmm. and she's, or maybe she's just afraid to talk. Okay, so She just wants to be quiet. Okay, Adira? Um, I think that, like, she tries her hardest to talk because she likes words, like, but she can't because, like, maybe her, um, voice isn't like their fellow people. Okay, so her voice or words don't work, okay? Because, um, because there's a bunch of words jumbled up in her head, she doesn't know what to say because all those words are in her head and it's some, some of the words don't make sense, so she doesn't want to say them. Okay, I can tell you that each of you is just a little bit right about what is actually wrong with Melody. And if you want to find out if Melody ever learned to talk, communicate, and express all of those words that are swirling around in her head, then you might just want to read Out of My Mind. What a fun instrument. A ukulele. Ukulele, yeah, that's right. And a watermelon ukulele. Uh, I've watermelon. never seen that. Yep. When the uh, Portuguese explorers were going around the world, they brought little guitars with them everywhere. So everywhere where there's a the, uh, where where they they stop, stopped, there's a little uh, a tribute to that everywhere. So Hawaii is one of those places, and they got the uh, ukulele. Well, I, you know, you do think of Hawaii and ukuleles. Yeah. And I didn't yeah. know that the circumnavigating Portuguese were the ones that we had to thank or blame. <laughs> So, you were going to teach me how to play one chord. Yes. All right. Teach you the easiest chord. The, the easiest. 
and that is the C major chord. So you take your second finger, okay. you put it on the third fret of the highest string. Okay. Uh, the other, the other right. highest string. Oh. The lowest highest string. There that you go. That one? Yep. Okay. And then... There you go. <laughs> C major. Amazing! Okay, that's awesome, except one chord does not a song make, does it? No. Nah, All right. right, kids. Tell you what, why don't you go check out an oldie but a goodie, and I'll see if I can learn two chords. Huh. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Peggy Goodman, principal of Gwen Oaks Elementary, and I'd like to share my favorite book with you today, The Little Engine That Could. I like this book because it's the story of a little tiny train with a big, big heart. The little train believes that she can do anything in life if she works hard at it and believes that she can. She also knows that she must say positive things to herself, and my favorite thing that she says to herself is, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. My favorite thing that she does after saying those words is that she begins to work hard. Listen to my favorite part. I'm not very big, said the little blue engine. They use me only for switching trains in the yard. I have never been over the mountain. But we must get over the mountain before the children awake, said all the dolls and the toys. The very little engine looked up and saw the tears in the doll's eyes. And she thought of the good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain who would not have any toys or good food unless she helped. And then she said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And she hitched herself to the little train. She tugged and pulled and pulled and tugged and slowly, slowly, slowly they started off. The toy clown jumped aboard and all the dolls and the toy animals began to smile and cheer. Puff, puff, chug, chug with the little blue engine. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Up, 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 faster and faster and faster and faster, the little engine climbed until at last they reached the top of the mountain. I hope you all will read The Little Engine That Could and remember the words that she says to herself every day. I know that I do, and I hope that you will enjoy this book. So here we are in the recording studio, but we don't know why. Scott has a surprise for us, so what is it? We are gonna record the theme song. That's fabulous. But Hello, we, guys. Need, we need somebody to do the vocal, so I was hoping you could. I don't... Oh, no, 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 no. You know how bad I am at instruments? Singing? Worse. Ah. Well, can you hum? I can hum. Everybody can hum. Well, I think I got just the instrument for you. Dun, 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 da. <gasps> A kazoo! A kazoo? My instrument. I knew it was an O. Oh, are you kidding? Wait. Perfect instrument. All right. Okay. All right. I'm in. I'm in. All right. We need them, don't we? Uh -huh. You ready in there? One, two, one, two, three. You have your hand stuck in the sacks again, don't you? All right, let's get you.
welcome back to Love That Book. We have such a great day planned. My friends, Katie and Kelly, BFFs forever, are coming over to help me get the playhouse ready for spring, which is very exciting. And, oh, here's, here's Katie. Hey, Katie, where's Kelly? Kelly who? Kelly, like your best friend in the whole wide world, smart kid, red hair, about that big, usually joined at the hip. Oh, her. We're not exactly on speaking terms right now. You're kidding me. What happened? Well, she started it. She said Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry I asked. You know what? Let's wait till Kelly gets here, and then you can both tell me at the same time. All right? In stereo. But while we wait for Kelly, how about I show you a great book about BFF's best friend? Step into my office. You're going to love this. It's about two best friends. The book is called The Sandwich Swap, and it is the coolest book. It's written by Her Majesty Queen Rania Al Abdullah of Jordan. That's a long name. That's a very long name. She's a queen, she gets a long name. Evidently, this happened to her when she was a little girl. It's about two best friends, Salma <laughs> and Lily. Now, Salma loves to have pita and hummus sandwiches every single day at lunch. And Lily, she loves her peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every single day at lunch. I love, love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Now, they've never tasted the other person's sandwich. They just kind of think they look and smell weird. Well, one day Lily says something, like, Ew, what are you eating? Gross. And that hurts Salma's feelings, so she says, Ugh. You think that's gross? What's that peanut butter slime you have on your sandwich? Well, that starts it. Before they know it, they're calling each other names. Other kids get involved. Ends up in a food fight. Food fight! And guess who ends up? Oh, yeah. See, little fights can turn into big altercations. They end up in the principal's office. Dun, 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 dun! The principal? That's not beautiful, is it? No. Luckily, they apologize, clean up the cafeteria with the help of some of the other kids, and then they have this wonderful idea at the end. Every kid in the school makes their favorite sandwich no matter where they're from, and they have a ginormous sandwich swap. That's really sweet. So you see, good friends um, aren't always going to see eye to eye, right? Right. And um, you can have ups and downs and bad days, but if you have a really great friend, you always find a way to get back together again. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I have a good feeling about Kelly and Katie. Yep. A good friend is someone who lets you have the last piece of chocolate cake, even though they secretly want it. Saves a seat on the bus for you. Tells the truth, even if it's embarrassing. Helps you with your homework when you're having trouble. And shares the lunch with you when you forget yours at home. You know what my favorite sandwich is? What? Get ready peanut butter and pickle sandwiches. Ew. <laughs> what are you saying? You're doing it. You're totally doing it, just like the story. <laughs> I do miss spending time with Kelly. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go see if she's home. I think that's a great idea. You know what? I suspect she's going to be so happy to see you. Good girl. Well, while Katie goes off to patch things up with Kelly, why don't we check out a cool new book? All day long, they work on chores. When nighttime comes, they work on snores. Good night, good night, construction site. By Sherry Dusky Rinker and Tom Lichtenheld. From Chronicle Books. Oh, hi, you're back. Guess what? Katie and Kelly are back to being BFFs. 
Isn't that great? I love a happy ending. And I love BFFs, don't you, George? So let me tell you about another happy ending. And bye, George. It's not about dogs. It's an oldie but a goodie. The Story of Ferdinand the Bull by Monroe Leaf. One of the best kids' books ever. It takes place in España, Spain, and it begins like this. Once upon a time in Spain, there was a little bull and his name was Ferdinand. All the other little bulls he lived with would run and jump and butt their heads together. But not Ferdinand. He had a favorite spot out in the pasture under a cork tree. It was his favorite tree and he would sit in its shade all day and ah, smell the flowers. Sometimes his mother, who was a cow, would worry about him. She was afraid he would be lonesome all by himself. Why don't you run and play with the other little bulls and skip and butt your head, she would say. But Ferdinand would shake his head. I like it better here, where I can just sit quietly and smell the flowers. <sighs> his mother saw that he was not lonesome, and because she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, she let him just sit there and be happy. As the years went by, Ferdinand grew and grew until he was very big and very strong. Oh, and now trouble, trouble, trouble for Ferdinand. But fear not, my young friends. You just keep reading because this story has a happy ending. My favorite kind of story. We saw several good books today, didn't we, children? I hope you enjoyed them both, Sandwich Swan and Ferdinand the Bull. And I hope you'll join us again on Love That Book and bring a friend. Where's my friend? George? George!